you can't replace what he did in that locker room. You can't replace what he did on the court. They wanted to move Malcolm Brogdon. They couldn't Damage. because of health Injury. issues. Yep. And now right. you end up moving Marcus Smart. So does that put Brogdon as your point guard? Do you play Derek White as your point guard? Sounds like Derek D. White. Derek, yeah. D. White, yeah. I yeah. think they're banking on D. White, giving them some of that. And, 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 and I love Derek White, but he's not that type of not leader. AG. No. Time will tell how much they miss Marcus Smart, and you probably won't see it in numbers, but it might be felt in other ways. But what he brings to Memphis, now you have two defensive player of the years on the same roster with mm-hmm. Darren Jackson Jr. as well. Memphis had to get mature. They had to grow up. They had to get their locker room under control. Maybe that move does it. All right, so we have finished the first round of the NBA draft. We move on to the second round. And so it is the, now let's see, the Pistons had the 31st pick, but it is now going to the Celtics. The Celtics are now going to be on the clock as the second round begins. Stay with us. This is the NBA draft on ESPN Radio and the ESPN app. It can be stressful when unexpected expenses come up, but Dave can help. Dave is the banking app that can help you get up to $500 instantly with extra cash. No interest, late fees, or credit check. Join the millions of people who have downloaded Dave and get up to $500 instantly with extra cash. Download the Dave app right now or go to Dave.com. For terms and conditions, go to Dave.com slash legal. Instant transfer fees apply. Banking services provided by Evolve. Member FDIC. MLB fans, when you need tickets to catch your favorite team live all season long, Ticketmaster's got them. As the world's largest ticket marketplace, Ticketmaster has a wide selection of seats available and at competitive prices, so you never have to worry about missing a game. Take yourself out to the ballpark this season and get tickets today at Ticketmaster.com forward slash MLB. That's Ticketmaster.com forward slash MLB. Friday on Canty and Carlin, all the reaction from the NBA draft, all the trades as well. And now, how does it all affect free agency beginning next week? It's Friday, Canty and Carlin, 3 p.m. Eastern on ESPN Radio and the ESPN app. On June 30th, a hero arrives only in theaters. Indiana Jones, a final triumph. This summer, a legend will face his destiny. I've seen things, things I can't explain. But I've been looking for this all my life. His final adventure. Give up hell, Indiana Jones. Will be his greatest. This is it. Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. Rated PG-13. May be inappropriate for children under 13. Only in theaters June 30th. Tickets on sale now. ESPN celebrating Pride Month with R.K. Russell. I am a black bisexual man. That's what I am. That's why I've always been. Pride Month to me is a celebration of the LGBTQIA plus community, past, present, and future, who will be born just as they are and who will continue to celebrate themselves in the way that all human beings should. I was inspired and still am inspired by Jason Collins. As a black man in sport and as a gay man in the NBA, being the first to come out, Jason Collins has shown courage, bravery, and determination beyond his time. He is a constant example to me that an athlete coming out can only lead to a brighter future. Coming out has impacted my sports experience by allowing me to have more genuine connections with teammates, coaches, mentors, fans, and hopefully inspire a next generation of LGBTQIA+, athletes in any arena of sport that they choose celebrating pride month on espn you're listening to the nba draft on espn radio and on the espn app and welcome back to the barclays center here in brooklyn new york as we are now into the second round of the nba draft Deputy Commissioner Mark Tatum at the podium. In the 2023 NBA Draft, the Detroit Pistons select James Naji from Makordi, Nigeria. James Naji being the first pick of the second round. It is the Pistons right now on the board, but as Woj has been reporting, this pick will be conveyed to the Boston Celtics. It's Alan Hahn, P.J. Carlissimo. Seth Greenberg and Corey Alexander here with you at the Barclays Center as we begin the second round of the draft. And so we were just talking about the Celtics. They had a center in James Naji right now is, again, this is a Pistons pick, but reports say 
It will end up in Boston. Gentlemen? I like James Dodge. Big, physical, strong, pretty good feet. Dunker spot, rim protector, massive body, young, pretty good hands. Not great hands, but pretty good hands. Just to take, again, I watched a bunch of tape on him. Man. He looks like a prospect, right? He's the fifth player from uh, Nigeria drafted. Uh, Going to be uh, 11th from Africa. There, w- there were 11 from Africa in the league last year. I mean, it's just busting open right there now. But uh, five Nigerians on rosters last year. Uh, he's uh, played in that Giants of Africa program that Masai Jiri uh, started the camp over there. Uh, he's, I'll tell you what, you, you describe, he's raw for sure, yeah. but he is a big, strong guy, and he's played for two years. He's played in the Euroleague, played for FC Barcelona. Now, you're not talking somebody that, you know, is coming in and, ha- and hasn't been here before. Uh, he's, James Najee is going to be interesting. Uh, again, and we're confident he's going to end up in Boston. 18.7 years old. He's not even 19 years old. Yep. We got somebody that I'm very confident in sitting down right now, though. <laughs> and he's got a whole bunch of players to talk about. Uh, welcome in uh, Nate Oates, the great coach from the University of Alabama. Uh, how you doing, PJ? I'm great, brother. Let's talk about your guys. Been a great night already for you. was well, a good night. We had two of them going to the top 21, so we're, we're happy. I'm, I'm excited for both of them. I think Brandon will be great and Charlotte and it's not too far. I can get over there and watch him a lot. And shoot, it, shoot, him and Nick Smith played together in AAU, too. So we recruited Nick hard. So I was feeling bad for Nick. I'm happy that they ended up together in Charlotte. It'll be cool to watch those two play. Hey, tell our, our listeners what, what kind of player Brandon is and, and what he may be able to do, even as a, a rookie um, for, for Charlotte. Yeah, I mean, he's an elite shooter. He's a big-time scorer. But, he, you know, he's more than that, though, because he really played on the defensive end for us, too. You know, he's 6'9", long athletic good in, instincts and he's he's ultra competitive i mean when the game's got games got tight he, he got big for us and he showed up in big games he he competes so he, he's gonna be good how about your guy noah Clowney? comes in top 75 you guys identify him what did you see in him and Obviously, a little bit of a surprise from the day he stepped on campus to where he is today. Yeah, I mean, we saw a 6'10 athletic, and we thought he could shoot. You know, he showed that he could uh, shoot threes. We told him that we were going to play him at the four because we had Charles at the five. And, you know, we just kept encouraging him to shoot. You know, he didn't end up shooting it great, but his shot looks good. You know, he had to get some confidence to shoot every open shot. So he shot he shot almost 30% from three, but his defensive instincts are are through the roof. I mean, his reaction to breakdowns, teammate gets beat. He's over there covering for him, blocking shots. He's tough enough to take charges. You know, he's super smart, studies the scouting reports, so he's always aware of what's going on. And then he's really just about winning. I mean, you need him to rebound, he's going to rebound. He needs to block shots, play defense. He's a switchable five, you know, like the NBA is looking for six, ten guys that can switch. He, you know, when he was at the five, we just switched everything. So, I think he's going to come in shooting. He's really young. He's one of the youngest players in the draft. He's going to get a lot bigger and stronger. Nate, one of the things, of course, talking about Brandon, and you recruited him as soon as you got the job, you know, at Alabama. His dad played football there. You watched him grow as a player because it, from what I saw, Brandon was more of a playmaker, ball handler, passer before he actually got the jump shot. Talk about the work that he put in to be able to become the shooter that he was for you at Alabama. Yeah, no, he 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 puts in work. He gets in the gym and works. I mean, he's and he, you know, and his, his shot's a little bit in front of him, but he's got deep range and he's six nine. So once he gets it up, you know, you're not gonna be able to affect it much. But you know, he he really got better playing and picking rolls with us. He got better finishing at the rim. He went a lot stronger. He didn't settle for a lot of the mid range like he had, you know, playing high school in AAU. But with his length, you know, and you just watch how deep he could shoot it. I mean, he stayed in the gym and worked. And with how well he can shoot it and how slithery he is, if you got to guard him that far out, he's hard to hard to stay in front of when you space the floor like we do. When you have a guy like Brandon that has this type of success, does that make a guy like Jaron Stevenson say, hey, I'm going to reclass up and go play for Coach Oates. If he <laughs> yeah, can do it for I mean, Brandon Miller, honestly, he can do it for me. Yeah, no, it was a little bit more of the clowny situation being the 6'10 stretch four, five, but, yeah. Shoot, if he could play a little more like Brandon, we love it. We're, we're going to play it as good as we can get him playing. But, 
Yeah, I don't think I'm supposed to talk about recruits quite yet, but I don't think he's officially signed. But we we had it about, up at the bottom of our ticker, so we, yeah. we talked about oh, it. There you go. There, yeah, you talked about it. We're big fans of anybody you want to talk about. There you go. I'm, I'm your out, by the way. So, Nate, let me ask you about another guy, seven-footer from Canada, uh, who we still may hear his name, uh, Charles Bediaco. Yeah, I love Charles. He's a great kid. You know, he anchored our defense. We are number three defense in the country this year. He's an elite rim protector, shot blocker. You know, he's got to get a little bit better on offense. You know, he's your more traditional rim runner, lob target and pick and rolls. You know, you know he's not – he can shoot. He didn't step out much for us. I thought if he had come back, we'd have developed that a little bit more. But, you know, he's got a chance to, to go play for somebody. So it would be interesting to see if he can get – picked up here somewhere in the middle or late second round don't these guys understand that they're not all supposed to come out in one year like you gotta yeah. you gotta bring some guys back make your job a little easier next I know. year our, our, guard, our guards are back hopefully we're back here next year with a bunch of guards getting drafted thank so. you very much for spending time with us nate no, appreciate it congratulations fine. on a great year thanks for having me on appreciate it thanks, thanks nate and again nate oates coach at alabama seeing his player go number three overall in the draft and brandon miller and you know, again, just the, it's we talk about the families, we talk about the players and what they go through, but for these coaches, what it means to their programs, and certainly just for them personally, these are players they recruit, develop, and then they see them see their dreams come to life on this stage. I'm telling you though, like, like Seth, I mean, how proud you are when you get one guy. These guys are yeah. juggling back and forth <laughs> yeah. from one table to the other. <laughs> they, all, they all got two guys coming up, coming out. It's incredible uh, how many coaches we had in there had two players, and, I mean, even Danny, Jordan Hawkins, was great. What he go, at 14? Still got Adama Sinogo. Whether he goes tonight or not, I don't know. Yeah, Andre, Jackson. Andre Jackson. Jr., who, A, I love the guy as a player, and uh, he was our post-game interview, I think, four of the six games That's in the tournament. But he shouldn't have come out. Shouldn't have come out. got to stay. Uh, uh, that one, watch that him one. Pro prove me wrong, Andre. You know, let him go somewhere and let, let him uh, do great, but. That's a tough decision sometimes for these guys. Oh, yeah. Alan, you know, you listen to, you know, sometimes it's family, sometimes it's an agent, sometimes it's both. But knowing, you know, it's one thing when you're confident where you're going to be drafted when all indications are you're going late. Poor, I mean, well, how difficult is that? And, PJ, also, you get great evaluation from NBA GMs. And then you have an opportunity to go through the combine and everything until June 1st, you have that much time to make a decision. If things aren't going in your favor by that point, yep. to me it seems as though it's a simple decision. Go back to college, yep. improve your game, and now with NIL in the mix, go make some money. Well, and the you league is the league is least. the league has made it good because they've changed the rules. It used to be you had to declare so early, and you, you know now there's so much dialogue back and forth. There's really not mystery. You should know should have a great feel for where you're going. And as you mentioned, now balance that with NIL money. I mean, I, I just don't understand it uh, with some of the decisions that were made. We are at the stage now where those who decided to come but weren't invited to the green room. The green room is empty now, right? Oh, do we one, have one? Ryan uh, from, oh, uh, that's from right, France. Repair, right? Uh, yep. Okay. Yep. So there's still one more. Ryan Repair. Uh, but, but there are now players who, are, who came to the building. They decided, I'm going to be in the arena. I want my moment on the stage. And so we have seen that a couple of times. James James Naji was one of them. He was the first pick of the second round, and uh, Leonard Miller just went. And right, and, and, excuse me, went thirty third to the uh, Spurs. Right, and, and then you had Colby Jones just went now, who was really good player. The Charlotte Hornets. So we're four picks into the second round with the Boston Celtics on the clock, waiting for their pick. And you know, again, this is moving right along, but we are starting to see teams that are shaping up. Leonard Miller's another Ignite guy uh, going. Yes. Another G League, uh, G League Ignite uh, player goes. From Canada. Yeah, Leonard Miller, of course. Here we go again. Yep. Yeah. Play, played in that game of, with, of course, Victor Wembanyama, Scoot Henderson. Yes. Vic, he was one of the guys who was a standout for G League Ignite this year. Falling to the second round, you can see visibly disappointed, in disappointment on his face as he's walking around. But at the same time, the Spurs get another long, athletic playmaker in Leonard Miller and a guy that can flourish in that system under Greg Popovich and his great staff and, of course, the culture that they built in San Antonio. 
Rod Baker really loves this kid. Uh, Rod Baker, obviously, working with G League Knight. Um, he says he can run all day, capable of shooting the basketball, high-level rebounder, finishes around the rim. He, he thinks he has a huge, you, and you've seen him more than I have, well, huge upside. We saw the improvement from him a year ago when he was at the NBA Combine compared to what he did at G League Ignite and where he is today. And I'm glad you mentioned my guy, Rod Baker, Seth, do you realize? Shake and bake, your guy. I was in a system with him at Columbia <laughs> when, you, when were, I had hair. Do you know? Do you know who his head coach was when he was recruiting me? <laughs> Him, PJ Carlos. It will be the guy to your left. <laughs> and be by the way, PJ Carlosimo said you'd still be in the league if you came and played for him. You're right, yeah. right. On my 50th birthday. Well, hey. Just getting into the league is uh, everybody that so far has been chosen tonight, and at the very top of this draft, of course, was Victor Wembanyama who was taken number one overall by the San Antonio Spurs. Coming up, we will talk more about the impact that he can make on the NBA in his very first season, and we'll continue with the second round. Right now, the Boston Celtics are on the clock. Right after them, the Orlando Magic, who have been very busy tonight as well. All that and more coming up. You're listening to the NBA Draft on ESPN Radio and the ESPN app. This weekend on ESPN Radio, interleague rivals go head-to-head -head in Los Angeles. Grand slam, Jose Altuve. Jose Altuve and the Houston Astros begin a 10-game road trip against Freddie Freeman and the Dodgers. Freeman driven well out of here. The Astros and Dodgers. Coverage begins Saturday at 6.30 Eastern and Sunday at 6 Eastern on ESPN Radio. You can also listen on the ESPN app and on Sirius XM Channel 80. Did you miss Canty and Carlin? Nuno sent me a picture of Jeremy Fowler in the hall at ESPN up in Bristol doing his hit with us. The exact quote was, Fowler doing the hit while walking down the hall. Call him out. I chose not to do that to Jeremy. Nuno sent this picture from behind. Like, that hair from behind, he looks like Elvis. He looks amazing. What is Nuno doing, though? Like, I spy Jeremy Fowler exactly. while he's on the phone with exact Canty and Carlin? Canty and Carlin. Weekdays at 3 Eastern on ESPN Radio and on the ESPN app. Mike Greenberg. Green. My middle name is wrong on Wikipedia. The day after the inauguration of Joe Biden as president, when the chief justice, you know, is reading his name, I, Joseph Robinette Biden, like everyone made, oh my goodness, his middle name is Robinette. It's an unusual middle name. The next day, in a debate about something else entirely, Dominique Foxworth just said, now you listen to me, Michael Robinette Greenberg, and someone changed that on Wikipedia. Six weeks ago, I'm doing an interview to promote the book, and someone in the interview says, so let me ask you, your middle name is Robinette. That's an unusual name. Where did that come from? And I had to have the excruciatingly awkward conversation of saying my middle name is not Robinette. You should not be looking at Wikipedia as your source for information. My middle name is not Robinette. My middle name doesn't start with an R. I'm not going to tell you my middle name because what the hell do you care what my middle name is? Greeny with Mike Greenberg. Weekday mornings at 10 Eastern on ESPN Radio. Plus, you can watch and listen and on the ESPN app. This is the NBA Draft on ESPN Radio and the ESPN app. It's Alan Hahn, PJ Carlissimos, Seth Greenberg, and Corey Alexander joining you here at the NBA Draft at the Barclays Center here in Brooklyn, New York. We are into the second round of the draft. 35 picks are in, the first 30 in the first round. And the very first of the night, no surprise, Victor Wembanyama from France, the seven foot four wonder kind of. We will see, and we maybe never seen anything like him in the NBA. He will go to the San Antonio Spurs. But first, he had to come to us, and we, we talked with him right after he was chosen earlier tonight. I imagine there wasn't a lot of curiosity about where you were going. But do you just feel a relief that this process, this part of this whole thing is now over with and you can just go forward now as a Spur officially and focus on your NBA career? Yeah. You know, uh, wasn't much of suspense, but <laughs> still, the emotion is there, you know, after <laughs> I was called in front of everyone. You know, that music before he, he says my name and stuff, that was so, so special. Let's I'm think. loving the moment. You should love the moment. You got somebody who played in San Antonio for a number of years, and I was lucky enough to coach there for five years when uh, TP first got started. Go back a month 
ago when it was announced and you know you found out that night your very your parents have done a great job raising you and you've done an unbelievable job you always say the right thing but really that were, was san antonio the one oh, you were hoping for all along absolutely yeah without a doubt yeah you watched did you watch t uh, tony growing up or how far back oh, do you yeah. go watching Gr growing the up, yeah growing up, of course i watched tony yeah it, with the spurs and with the national team too yeah, I mean everyone, every French basketball player around my age, he's, he's watched Tony growing up. Well, Victor, as as Greg Popovich's first ever draft pick, <laughs> I want to I want to welcome you to the San Antonio Spurs family first and foremost. Thanks, man. But I had an opportunity to call your game October the fourth when you your first game really? on U.S. mainland. Okay, and you played great in that game, but you were more satisfied with your second game. Where you won, you made it very clear. You're all about winning. How soon can you win in San Antonio? Uh, you know, fortunately, I think I'm I'm not experienced enough to be able to answer this question. But this is going to be my goal in the first year: learn as much as possible because the chip, the the, the ring, it's always what I'm going to be winning. So as soon as possible. PJ, you've been in this league a really long time. I don't think I've ever listened to a more mature player at your age walk into this spotlight and handle it in the manner in which you have. Who do you credit for that? Who do I give credit to? You know, uh, my, myself first, myself, you know. But my parents, they had the, the biggest role in, in that because they let me free. You know, they, they never imposed nothing to me. If, you know, earlier I was telling my mom, Jokingly, yeah, I don't like basketball. I don't feel like I like basketball no more. I, I want to stop. <laughs> but I, I was I was just joking, and she she was like, yeah, I know it's a joke, but if you if you really want it, then do it. You know, they they they, ne they never forced me to, to do anything, and this is how I could really develop into the person I am truly. You really love the game. That's that's of what course. matters most. Every player, and you've probably been asked this a million times, but every player has. Someone that, whether you were younger or at some point, you looked at and said, I want to play like him. Is there someone, is there a player that you try to emulate? Is it multiple players? Because your game and your multiple size players. is so unique. Yeah, multiple players. Yeah, you know, uh, my game, it's it's kind of the same as with my parents. You know, they let me free develop my personality. But my coaches, they were good coaches too, and they let me develop my game too. So my game resembles a mix of a lot of players. So I never had one role model, you know, but I, I looked up to many players, many great players, and got inspired from them. Yeah. You're pretty LeBron. good in that silver and black. Good luck. <laughs> Congratulations, Thanks, Victor. Thank you for joining us. And Wembanyana going number one in San Antonio, where they're used to taking big men number one, and they're used to it becoming a big success. As David Robinson won a champion, won two championships. Tim Duncan, multiple championships. Both of them going to the Hall of Fame. Yes, five, as PJ is reminding me. A handful. Yeah, that's right. A handful. Both going to the Hall of Fame, and now Wembanyana tries to join that level with Greg Popovich as a head coach. Now, something that we've all – you don't even have to watch him play. If you just meet him, he's sitting here with us. The first thing you notice is not just the fact that how much length he has, how tall he is, his wingspan, but how thin he is. And that is something that he has said – when people tell him to bulk up, he says, no, you need to get skinny. That the NBA is different now. And PJ, you co you coach the NBA in, in, in different eras. Does he need to bulk up? Yes. Is that something that's going to be a concern for him in his first year? Yes, it absolutely is. Because when he's, these guys, you can't say bigger, but when these stronger, more physical guys are leaning on him, it's going to be hard for him to get leverage. Uh, and I don't think he's going to spend a ton of time uh, on the box necessarily posting up, but he's going to defend some post people. Uh, you know, I mean, I think that's going to be Zach Collins' job. It's going to be Bassey's job. But, uh, you know, there's going to be nights when they're, when they're going to struggle and, and Pop's going to say, well, guess what? We're just going to stick Victor down there and play behind him. Let me see this guy shoot over the top of him. So uh, boxing out, you know, uh, getting to the rim. I mean, he's such a great ball handler. But, I mean, you know, we're used to watching LeBron just put a guy on his hip and just wipe the guy out. It's like Jimmy right. Brown going through a hole. Uh, yeah, he needs strength. There's no question about that. I'm not going to disagree and say his athleticism is not going to be a big thing.
but he certainly needs to get much stronger than he is right now. But, P.J., you're the perfect person to ask that question because in 2007, how many people came to you and said, does oh. Kevin Durant need to get stronger? Without quite, and, and we thought, you know, we said, well, look, when we get him in the weight room, he's going to have – not that Rick Barnes didn't have him in the weight room at, at Texas. Kevin has one of those frames that just doesn't get – he's much stronger now than he was then, but he hasn't put on a lot of weight. But you can see the definition, and again – that's part of the problem, again, getting point to point or denying a guy from getting point to point. That strength becomes a factor. And when you start talking about boxing out or, or you know, getting getting there, uh, I think it makes a difference. But KD is still thin, and it, it hasn't really been a problem for him. He seems to be dealing with it <laughs> fa- fairly well. Uh, I, I'm a firm believer, and I, I agree with everyone from the standpoint that Victor does need to get stronger. I don't think he needs to get bulkier no. because, again, at seven foot five, and of course, the concern always being your feet when you're that tall. Yes. I don't want to see him put on a tremendous amount of bulk to put more pressure on his feet to probably risk more injury. But I do think he needs to get stronger. But what he has is an innate ability. When you switch, say he sets a screen and you switch it, you put anyone seven feet or below on him. He just turns and shoots over top of you. That's his not greatest weapon. There. He's yeah. not going to back you down. Yeah. He's just going to turn and shoot over top of you, and that is, that's his greatest weapon is his ability to shoot the basketball. And I'll say this. He shoots the NBA basketball better than he does the FIBA basketball. For those who have experience with playing in, with the FIBA basketball, it's slick. It doesn't have the same grooves. An NBA basketball is built to shoot. It has much, the much deeper grooves in it, and with his size hands, He's going to be a better NBA shooter than even he has been in European play. I think the big thing is when he gets guarded by a six foot eight physical guy that's going to get underneath him and get into his legs. You can shoot over him, but a guy that like you know he like he, talking to Wemby today. He, he's I'm excuse me. Uh, oh my god. Uh, anyway, uh, <laughs> I've got a little brain dead here. Uh, We're almost forty picks in. It's understandable. <laughs> He doesn't like he he loses balance a little bit. He gets knocked off balance a little bit. Now you playing in the NBA, how would you guard him, PJ? You're not guarding him with a big. You're going to guard him with a six 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 seven physical defender get that's going to try to get into his legs and be physical with him, right? But you're also going to try and pick him Wendy, up. Wendy, I'm yeah. saying Wendy. That's I, yeah. Wendy said that's a problem that at times overseas that people got into his hips. Brian Windhorst, right? Who, yeah, who actually Wendy. spent time with him overseas, overseas. over in France. Thanks, I appreciate the help. Way to jump in. Yeah, I, I, I knew where you were going with it. I will you also guys, add to that guys, point that the international game is more physical than the NBA game right now. Because twice. when you turn and face up, you can't be touched. And so, therefore, when Victor catches the basketball, if he turns and faces up, you have to be hands off at that point. And so now the only time that you can actually be physical with him is when he's playing with his back to the basket. I can remember when Dirk came into the league, we switched everything on Dirk. Mm. I've got a picture in my man cave of me guarding Dirk in the post. I got the kickstand on him. I mean, I got one <laughs> leg back, and he's not going anywhere. But what did Dirk do? He developed the one, the one foot, <laughs> the one leg, turn Amen. away, shoot right over the top of anybody that they switched, and he ended up scoring 30,000 points in the NBA. <laughs> so – Victor will adapt. I believe that, of course, people will try to be physical with him, but he will adapt. And we also have to remember he's 19 years old. He's nowhere near as good as he's going to be at this point. He's also going to grow naturally stronger. I mean, he's 19 years old. He's, he's going to get stronger as he goes. And, and part of the strength, you're right, it's not, not going to be just a question of how much he can bench. It's can you play 82 games? Can you play 35, 37 minutes a game? with the travel that he's going to, you know, encounter now in the NBA, which uh, for, you know, a- anybody other than uh, Corey would be a problem, a challenge. Yeah, the kickstand, he, nobody's beat the kickstand yet. <laughs> that or, or, or you and, and Malik Rose pulling the chair. <laughs> the, Malik, that, he was that here. Also, that, I, I saw, that's also, yeah, yeah that, that, that's that, also that, the case. Every trick that you can find, you try to use them. Okay, so we're 39 picks through the second round now, or at least through the entire draft. We're in round number two of the NBA draft. Muhammad Gay from Washington State. Pretty skilled, goes. right? Yeah. yeah I, again, guy who I thought should have, you know, did, did not need to come out, but I like him. Uh, he's a good player. All right. The next couple of picks that we have coming up are the Denver Nuggets. That is the next pick at number 40. And then the Charlotte Hornets, who have been very busy tonight as they just made the pick there, Muhammad Gay. 
They will pick again at 41. We'll continue with the coverage here at the Barclays Center. This is the NBA Draft on ESPN Radio and the ESPN app. How are you? My name is Scott Van Pelt, host of SC Pod. SC Pod. Along with my partner in crime, Stanford Steve. What do we talk about mostly on the podcast, Steve? Sports. Some. Parenting. I feel like that comes up a lot. I feel like most recently I've needed some help because I feel like my shortcomings there are evident. It's life stuff, you know, relatable content. It's fun. It's just two bald-headed goons just talking about nonsense a lot. In a crowded podcast space, uh, there's that one. We're here. Here we are. Keyshawn. Jay Will and Max. One of the things I love about Dame, I could care less what people will try to take him from team to team or they get frustrated because he's pump making or he's always talking about what other teams potentially look like. But if Dame has loyalty to, towards Portland, then I respect that. That's his decision with his career. Like he's from that area, born and raised around that. Like if that's what he wants to do with his career, then fine. I think people would understand. I think people understand if he moved. They, people would welcome him moving. I don't think he would get backlash. Look, the only reason why Kevin Durant got in trouble with people like you, Max, is because he joined a team that had won championships and all this, and he was young still. Had Kevin Durant done that at, it was day 10th year for that? It was like 10, 11 years Yeah, I mean, he's been in the league for a long time. If had Kevin Durant been in the league for 11 years, 10 years, 12 years, whatever, I don't think anybody said anything. GJ and Max, mornings on ESPN Radio and on the ESPN app. Listening to the NBA Draft on ESPN Radio and on the ESPN app. And we are 40 picks into the NBA Draft here at the Barclays Center in Brooklyn, New York. Alan Hahn, PJ Carlissimo, Seth Greenberg, Corey Alexander. The 40th pick by the Denver Nuggets, the, the, the new NBA champion Denver Nuggets. Maxwell Lewis from Pepperdine, that is the pick that they have there. Some interesting picks so far here in the second round, guys. And Andre Jackson Jr. from UConn was taken at 36, the sixth pick in the second round by the Magic. That now, though, will be conveyed to the Milwaukee Bucks. We like this pick? We do. I, I love it. I mean, again, it's one of those things where you we, – we, we're sitting here having a conversation about whether he should have actually come back or, I mean, gone back to school. Right? And when you go 36, it's worth it. Because now there should be a roster spot for you, at least a guaranteed contract. So I like the position that he went to. And, of course, the Orlando Magic absolutely need defense. Well, well they flip it out of Milwaukee. Going to Milwaukee so, right so there you go. <laughs> but, but if you're if you're Andre Jackson, now you're moving to a much different situation than you would have in Orlando. You're going to a ready-made situation of a team that has championship aspirations and how he can fit with that. Well, one thing, I, I watch this kid practice all the time. He's at an incredible motor. And what he learned this year, show people what you can do, not what you can't do. Terrific passer in transition, an elite lockdown defender, makes freaky plays around the rim. He's got to shoot the ball. Well, and, and that's my concern with him going to Milwaukee because the value on shooting when you play for the Milwaukee Bucks is so much higher because – Giannis creates so many opportunities for his teammates. So if you don't shoot it at a high clip from the three-point arc, that can make you a liability on the floor, and you can't play with Giannis. you got to have guys around them that take the pressure off them, basically loading up the paint. So I think Orlando was a better fit, but, hey, Milwaukee he, He's also them. a really good cutter. Like, you know, so, like, like, he's a cut-to-score guy. You know, he's not a cut-to-cut. Cut. Like, he's cutting, boom, catch, anything in the crowd – and finish. He's a great transitional passer. Though. Yes, I agree. tell you though, I, help me. I'm um, coming in late on the conversation. Wouldn't UConn have been a good team for him? <laughs> oh, this I, I think year? UConn. The way they practice and the way their player development is, watching him grow, uh, that team would not have been clinging. Uh, Caravan oh. coming back. Caravan who makes every shot. And uh, Stacey Castle coming in. Who, who I talked to Dan, he said he's absolutely playing. He's, he's been better than expected. Well, the Denver Nuggets just made their pick at 40, and that's Maxwell Lewis from Pepperdine. Prospect. As 
Okay, there's Larry my Bailey. guy. And going UCLA. to Charlotte. I tell you what, they're getting the gang back they together. They're really busy, aren't they? Nick Smith Jr., mm-hmm. Amari Bailey, both those guys very close. Spent a lot of time together at the McDonald's All-American Amari game. Bailey can play. Amari Bailey helped himself in the combine yeah. also. He can absolutely he play. He can play. End of the season, he, I'm at the end of the season, his last, I think, seven games, the Pac-12 tournament, no. he ended up a tournament, he averaged set like 17 points, no, 20 I'm points I'm telling you what, and he big and shots. Guards, Big shots. And Amari's he, here. He played. He's, he's here in the building. Hopefully we can get him over here and get an opportunity to talk to him. I don't understand why PJ didn't go with the North. There's been a conversation, of course, about how we have, we've had different champions now over the last, what is it, five years? Five in a row. We have not had a repeat champion. Are we in that new era now, or do the Denver Nuggets still have what it takes to be a team that can become, I know this is a word that everybody shakes, oh, they just won one. Can you say dynasty here with this team? Uh, dynasty is a strong word, but can they repeat? Can they be a factor in the next couple of years? Absolutely. Absolutely. They're legit. They play both ends of the floor. They have right now the best player in the league. Uh, and and maybe one of the Jamal best. Mur- he's, in the getting, he's getting healthier. He's still, you know, I mean, he's going to have one, like, full year now where he's gangbusters the entire year. So, uh, yeah, I, I like that team a lot. And Michael Malone doesn't do a good job. He does a great job, yeah, great job. coaching that team. All right. The Charlotte Hornets have been a very busy franchise tonight in the draft. And the pick they just made at number 41, Amari Bailey from UCLA. And he joins us right now. Amari, welcome. Congratulations. And how, just how does it feel you are in the NBA? It's such an amazing feeling. Like, I don't even really know uh, where to start. But I'm very thankful and appreciative of uh, the Hornets. I mean, just really believing in me. So. 
Amari, you helped yourself significantly at the combine this year. You showed that you could play with the basketball in your hands, that you can make plays. Most of the year of UCLA, of course, you played off the ball with Tiger at the point guard position, but you showed very well the combine. What was your decision-making process to be a guy that actually went out and competed at the combine? Uh, really just showing uh, what I'm capable of and uh, what I wasn't able to do at UCLA. Um, and that's no knock, but you just get a different role at each team that you are. And so, um, yeah, I'm just excited to get to work. And All right, you, uh, I got a chance to do a bunch of your games late in the year and then uh, the two tournaments, the, the Pac-12 tournament and the NCAA. Uh, you were just getting better by the week. Uh, you played with so much confidence late in the year, uh, big shots, uh, tough matchups defensively. What was it that allowed you to, in my opinion, improve? You're saying that you could you could have done that at any time during the year, but I thought you were playing your best basketball down the stretch. Uh, I definitely agree with uh, what you're saying. I feel like I could have been doing that the whole year, but um, it just is what it is. Um, more so while I was hurt, I was able to see the game from a coach's perspective and um, really just look at what I was doing, uh, maybe not as well, and um, just taking those five, six weeks to just take my time and um, slow the game down a little bit, and that's what was able to happen towards the second half of the season with what you guys saw. And, Mar, you get to go to Charlotte and team up with your uh, McDonald's All-American backcourt partner, Nick Smith Jr. So you guys seem like you should have some uh, some fun out there. And also another McDonald's All-American and Brandon Miller. Are you excited to be able to go be a part of the Charlotte Hornets and be able to play alongside those guys who you played so much against throughout your career? No, I'm just grateful for the opportunity and as well as B-Mill and uh, B-Mill, Nick Smith, uh, all of Charlotte. I'm just ready to go. Congratulations. Appreciate y'all. Thank you, Amari. Good All luck, Amari. Right. The Charlotte Hornets have been very busy, and they're not just busy making picks. They're busy collecting guards, guys. They can't all be going there. Exactly. Uh, I believe actually all three of these guys, well, we know Brandon will be there. Yeah. we start yeah. with that. <laughs> but I, I do believe that they will all end up there. And we go back and we look at what happened in Charlotte a season ago with LaMelo Ball and the, the ankle injury. injuries. Yep. Yeah. And, again, Dennis Smith Jr., we talked about it, had a great season, a resurgent season for him. But you have to have guards in this game. And we talk about the fact that instead of there now being, you know, 15 roster spots, there are now 16 roster spots each team. They're adding a three-way spot into the fold this year. So now, I'm sorry, the, now you can have three two-ways on your roster to go along with your 13 roster spots. So, more jobs available. Yeah. Mitch said it today. Mitch said today. He said we're going to have to have some two-way guys. We may have to stash somebody uh, in Europe or, or somewhere else to deal with the the five picks. We got another combine guy, by the way, Core Vucevic. Uh, Vucevic yes. really helped himself. He in really Chicago. did. Yes, he yep. did. So Just, much so that he didn't play the second day. Yeah. How about that? <laughs> he was that good on day one. Exactly. Yes, Tristan Vucevic has gone at number forty-two to the Washington Wizards, another franchise that has been extremely busy coming up again at the very top of the draft you had victor Wembanyama, but the third pick of the draft was an interesting one and one that was going to set the tone for the rest of the night the portland trailblazers what were they going to do well they made the pick scoot henderson now what happens going forward with damian lillard do they keep him or is he on the move at some point in the next couple of weeks that's coming up of course in the rest of the second round of the nba draft you're listening to the nba draft on espn radio and there's a reason you aren't satisfied with the ordinary you were made for adventure a life with god doesn't have to be boring it can be a pulse pumping heart pounding life of purpose and we can guide you there the adventure awaiting you is bigger and more life-giving than you could ever imagine join crossroads church every weekend online for challenge hope and encouragement to guide you on your spiritual adventure. Join us at crossroads.net. These days, there are plenty of things to worry about, but keeping pests out of your home shouldn't be one of them. That's why you need Massey Services. Massey eliminates pests before they get inside. They start by carefully inspecting the inside and outside of your home, and then focus customized treatments on the outside. Best of all, your satisfaction is guaranteed or your money back. That's the Massey difference. Expect more and get it.
Our 4th of July cookout is tomorrow and the fridge is empty. So why are you on a pool float drinking through a twisty straw? Because Smart and Final has everything we need and they deliver. 18 ounce packs of blueberries are $3.99 each. Order complete. Anything I can do? You're kind of blocking the sun. Smart and Final, one trip and that's it. Failure, no. I'm sorry, what? What? The bar has changed for the New York Yankees, and it was changed by Brian Cashman. And Hal Steinbrenner has bought into it. Canty and Carlin, weekdays at 3 Eastern on ESPN Radio, the ESPN app, and on Sirius XM Channel 80. Do you ever wish that you could get closer to the world of sports? Well, with the ESPN app, you're one app and one tap away from the action. You can get live scores and stats for your NBA team. Or follow your favorite golfer as she launches off the tee. You even get 24-7 coverage of the biggest NFL plays. So what are you waiting? Oh, sorry, I carried away. So what are you waiting for? Download the ESPN app and get closer than ever. This weekend on ESPN Radio, interleague rivals go head-to-head in Los Angeles. Jose Altuve and the Houston Astros begin a 10-game road trip against Freddie Freeman and the Dodgers. Freeman driven well out of here. The Astros and Dodgers. Coverage begins Saturday at 6.30 Eastern and Sunday at 6 Eastern on ESPN Radio. You can also listen on the ESPN app and on Sirius XM Channel 80. Major League Baseball in London and Los Angeles. Let's play two. First, it's a rivalry game across the pond. Cardinals, Cubs, the London series presented by Capital One at 10 a.m. Eastern. Then, two star studded teams look to light up the scoreboard as the Astros take on the Dodgers. This is premier baseball. Sunday night baseball. Sunday at 7 Eastern on ESPN. Presented by Casamigos Tequila. This is the NBA Draft on ESPN Radio and the ESPN app. Welcome back to the Barclays Center here in Brooklyn, New York. Alan Hahn, PJ Carlissimo, Seth Greenberg, Corey Alexander. We're here covering for you. We are now into the second round of the NBA Draft. Portland Trailblazers just picked the very last player left in the green room. Is Ryan Ru- Corey Alexander. We're here covering for you. We are now into the second round of the NBA draft. Portland Trailblazers just picked the very last player left in the green room is Ryan Rupert from France. And the Portland Trailblazers have been an interesting story leading into this draft, gentlemen, because with their pick at number three, there was a lot of talk and speculation about what they were going to do there because their star, Damian Lillard, said he was not really in the mood for any more teenagers on this team, that he wanted the franchise to try to build around him for a chance to win a championship while he was still in his prime. And there was some talk of would they trade Lillard or would they trade the pick? Teams called, no trade was made. Scoot Henderson was the pick at number three. And so no news yet about what they'll do going forward. But the one thing that we have seen tonight with the Trailblazers is it took Chris Murray at number 23 in the draft as well, is that they continue to make picks. And now the question is, what do they do going forward with Lillard? Do they tell him, look, you're on the contract. This is what we're doing. Stay with us. Or do they start taking calls you about one of the most kind of dynamic of players in the league? You can't you can't give him that ultimatum. They won't give him that I, ultimatum. That's what I'm saying. What, what, what the Portland Trail Blazers would do, even if they go into this season with Dame Lillard, with all the young players on the on the roster, they will take their time. And what they're really going to do, if that is the case, they don't make a move in the offseason, they're going to want Dame to come to them and say, it's time for me to move on. Yeah. And, and, again, they would want that to happen before the All-Star break. But Damian Lillard has made it very clear. He wants to play his entire career in Portland. So the only way but on the, his terms, right? Well, he's never really been that guy that's been on my terms. He has basically made suggestions to them and made it simple. I don't want to play with a bunch of teen, uh, teenagers because that doesn't give me a chance to right. get back into the playoffs and win. He wants guys around him that can help him win. He wants Jeremy Grant back. He wants the veteran guys that can help him win and get to the playoffs on his roster. What Portland is doing 
is they are stacking pieces. Anthony Simons is a great piece. Shaden Sharp is a great piece. And, of course, Scoot Henderson, even though he hasn't played an NBA game yet, has a very high yes. trade potential. And so when you think about that, they can use these pieces to go out and get the veterans who can help Brad, I mean, forgive me, help Dame get to the playoffs. Brad Bill was one of those guys that he was looking at, but Brad Bill ends up in Phoenix. And we may still get some movement by July 6th. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. they, they've been yeah. taking calls. Believe me, there's been a lot of people calling, uh, expressing interest. You know, it may not happen. may not happen for a while. But there's going to be some movement between now and July 6th. It feels like Do they it. have assets to get a good enough player unless they give up a guy like Scoot. Is it well, good enough player that, that is going to make them competitive enough where they can get to that's a chance to get to the – Western that, final. That, no, that's, they don't. That, no, the, the question is not about do they have enough pieces. The question is, are there pieces out there that are good enough that will be traded yeah. to come yeah. to Portland that are good enough to help him get there? It, cause, because when you look at guys like Simons, who is making $25 million a year, very good player, can be productive. He, he is a Jordan Poole type of guy, can be very productive. And then you think about Shaden Sharp, who still has three years on a rookie contract. Scoot Henderson, who has four years on a rookie contract. These are great assets because you don't have to pay them the big money until later. And so that's what many teams want to be able to have on their roster. Yeah, but again, and you're going to keep the, what? But you've got to give up something to get something. It feels like tonight is, right? if, if you're Portland, tonight the idea was let's just collect our assets. Let's that's make it. our picks. And now we've got time to figure out what can we do. We either – let's – is the best offer for Dame or is the best offer for some of these players that we just selected plus whatever else we've got going on, you know, future in the draft and whatever's on our roster to go forward. And Instead of trading picks, we're trading people that we chose. And let's also add this. In the last year of Dame's contract, I believe it's 2027, 20, he makes $63.8 million. If Dame isn't going to leave soon, He's not going to leave because teams are not going to take on that amount of money over the next few years. All right. Well, as the draft continues here in the second round, what we just had happen the last two picks, 43 and 44, there's two players from France. The number one pick also from France. But Ryan Rupert was one of those players. He is headed to the Portland Trailblazers, the team we are just talking about. And Ryan, first and foremost, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much. What has the process been like for you and and what, how much do you know about the Trailblazers and their situation that makes you a fit? Uh, I did a workout with the uh, Trailblazers uh, a couple of weeks ago, and uh, yeah, uh, I had the opportunity to you know talk with the organization, the coaches, see the practice facility, and uh, yeah, it was amazing. So I can't wait to to go to, to Portland. What are you going to bring to the Trailblazers? People from the states, people in Portland, define your game. Mm. Uh, I will bring my my energy. Uh, my defense, you know, I'm very disruptive defensively with my weak span. So, yeah, I just, yeah, we'll do every, anything I can do to help the uh, to partner, partner to, to win. Ryan, what went into your decision to uh, to go and play in New Zealand? I know, you know, Lamelo, some other guys yeah. have gone down there and done well. RJ have, have done mm -hmm. well. But wh why? Why New Zealand, and how do you think it worked out for you? Uh, so this opportunity to go up uh, as a player and as a person, you know, play far from my country. So, yeah, it was a great experience, uh, like I said, to, to go up as a player, as a person. And uh, so I'm grateful for, for this. French Connection, you guys are all being delivered. You saw CD went yeah, also. Yeah, my so guy. It's a, I'm so happy for him. I'm so happy for him. For the four of you, that's great. Yeah, uh, what a big the most, most players outside of North America, yeah, France has the most great. players in the NBA. So congratulations. Thank you. And good luck to you. Thank you very much. Ryan, thank you very much. Thank Ryan Rupert, and as you mentioned, the city, city Sissoko. He went 44th to the San Antonio Spurs as they add another Frenchman to that team, and they've had a few pretty good ones in the history of the Spurs. <laughs> and Sissoko, Rod Baker says he's a ridiculously creative passer and a competitive defender, but like as a passer, he's supposed to be an absolutely terrific creative passer with six nine wingspan, right? First, yeah, first European to play. Uh, almost, almost six, six nine and point seven five. Yeah. I mean, right there, first European to play for uh, Ignite, and we're talking about the league becoming, uh, you know, yeah. more international. Now they've got uh, players coming to play for G League Ignite. 
uh, internationally. On the clock, we have the Atlanta Hawks at pick number 46. But right now, let's pause 10 seconds for station identification. You're listening to the NBA Draft on ESPN Radio and the ESPN app. All right, back here at the Barclays Center in Brooklyn, New York. So as we go through the NBA draft, we are in the second round. We are through 46 picks. And one team we have not talked about tonight because they don't have any picks is the Phoenix Suns. But they have made some major moves since being knocked out of the second round of the playoffs. We'll talk about the Bradley Beal connection now and the impact that a new big three can have on the Western Conference and the NBA. You're listening to... The NBA Draft on ESPN Radio and the ESPN app. Will they find a home? Sponsored by Geico. Sarah wants a yard. My own little paradise. Brad, however, hates yard work. The only thing I hate more than cutting the grass is paying someone to cut the grass. Compromise is tough, but these two won't have to compromise when they bundle home and car insurance with Geico. It's easy, and they could save even more. In the end, Sarah and Brad found a great home with a yard. A very, very small yard. Time to get it done. And I'm done. Bundling without compromise at Geico.com. Are gentle with the nail trimmers. You mustn't nip the quick. Short-staffed, Marco needs to fetch some help now. The poodle has to look like a bear, scruffy to fluffy. He needs a groomer that will be the bark of the town. Please hold. Has anyone groomed the chinchilla before? Indeed can help him hire great people fast. I need Indeed. Indeed you do. We instantly connect you with quality candidates whose resumes on Indeed match your job description. Visit Indeed.com slash credit and get $75 towards your first sponsored job. Terms and conditions apply. Are you kidding me? Gas prices are up again? Somebody has to do something. Well, someone did. That's why I use Upside. Upside? What's that? It's a free app that pays you back real money for every gallon of gas or diesel you buy. I just earned 25 cents back on every gallon of this tank. So the Upside app is free and you actually get cash back every time you use it? No strings attached? Yep, it's awesome. Check it out. It only takes a couple of minutes to sign up. Instead of just watching your dollars go into your tank, start putting money back into your wallet with the free app from Upside. With the price of gas today, it's big news and big money. To cash out of your Upside cash, just transfer it to your bank account, PayPal, or a gift card. Upside users have already earned over $200 million. Now it's your turn. Download the free Upside app and get cash back on every gallon of gas. Use promo code ESPN23 for an extra 25 cents per gallon on your first fill. Up. That's code ESPN23. Use code ESPN23 for an extra 25 cents per gallon back in your first fill up. Cash back to the available in Cass, New Jersey, Wisconsin. You're listening to the NBA Draft on ESPN Radio and on the ESPN app. Live from the Barclays Center in Brooklyn, New York, Alan Hahn, P.J. Carlissimo, Seth Greenberg, Corey Alexander. As we're going through the second round now of the NBA draft, up to pick number 47, Los Angeles Lakers are on the clock right now. And I misspoke earlier. I said that the Suns didn't have a pick. They haven't picked yet, but they do have a pick at number 52 coming up here momentarily. But the Phoenix Suns is less about whoever they're going to take at number 52 and more about moves that they made since the playoffs ended, and one of the major moves that they made, well, let's say the trade deadline, they made a huge move in bringing in Kevin Durant. Then after the season ends, they make a trade for Bradley Beal. Now, there's not much left on that roster, guys, but this is, we thought, the end of the super team era, but here comes another super team with Kevin Durant at the middle. Do we think this team has what it takes to contend? They need depth. That's what did the Phoenix Suns in a year ago. That was what will do them in once again if they don't have depth. Because when you think about the fact that, of course, you can rotate those guys, they'll all start, but you can rotate them as well as you like. But you've got to find someone or someones that will go out and defend and also make shots. Because when you look at Brad Bill, Devin Booker, and Kevin Durant, and you say these three guys are elite level offensive players, I mean, Devin Booker is a good defender. But and Kevin Durant is a at this point of his career is a decent defender, but you're not jumping off the page saying that any of those three guys are going to go out and guard the opponent's best player, and and 
make it difficult on those other guys. So you've got to have some other guys in the mix that can go out and be those three and D type guys to help them win games. And you saw how difficult it was. I mean, you would think when you're inviting guys to play with LeBron James and AD, you'd be able to get, it's not easy to get minimum or, or veterans willing to play for that or these young guys and, and win with them. So it's like, you know, yeah, having three is a tremendous uh, luxury, and uh, it seems uh, your, your buddy, the uh, the new owner, is not Matt is, uh, Matt he's is not, not shy now. He's not <laughs> shy about spending money, but it is not easy to put together a roster when you start with the numbers they're starting with right now, and it's not going to be easy either um, to, to figure out uh, rotations and how guys how guys are going to play. It, it, it's going to be a challenge. I I, I mean I like what they're starting with. There's no question about that. But, you know, I, I, I don't pick them to, you know, some people are talking like, oh, well, they, they're going to just dominate the West. They're not dominating the Western Conference. And there's a team called Denver that's yeah. a complete team. But let me ask you something. Is, is it something, do they have to move Aiton to get that money to get players to build their roster? Or are they stuck with the season he's coming off and saying, wait a second, we got a guy that, you know, potentially, potentially, can be a, a winning front court player that can basically the game is going to be pretty easy with those other three dudes on the court. I, I don't think that they move Aiton, and especially when you consider the fact that they make the move to let Monty Williams go based upon the relationship with Aiton. That's that's a decision that you make as an organization. You side with the player in comparison to the coach. Which worked out well for my boy, by the way. So I'm, we're all good with that. Monty Williams did all right in Detroit. <laughs> he, he, he Six got years, seventy-five million. So Seventy-eight point five. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't want to shortchange him with bonuses that could take him well over a hundred million. So <laughs> yes. he's good. But at the same time, I don't believe you can move Aiton because what you've done is you said, okay, the relationship with Aiton, he we value him that much to where he has to be a focal point of what we're doing. And may I admit that I was wrong in our debate with my guy, Alan Hahn, when I said that they did not have four max contract guys, but they actually do. We had to go to Bobby Marks, our ESPN <laughs> front office insider. At 5 o'clock in the morning. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. By the way, Alan emailed me at 5.30 a.m. To, to get his point across, but it's all love. I appreciate it. <laughs> but uh, but they do have the four max contracts. Aiton is one of those contracts, and he has to be a significant piece in what they're building in the future because when you look at it, DeAndre Aiton – has a special talent, but that special talent has to be on the defensive end of the floor. And he has to embrace that role. And that's something when you have three other scorers on the team, you're going to have to accept what you are there. And that's up to Frank Vogel to get that point across. So big things happening in Phoenix with moves, big things happening in Boston and, and, and Golden State as well in a big trade that is not official yet, but is going to happen that is changing the look of the Boston Celtics, especially along the front line. We will talk about the impact KP can have in Boston. Coming up next, you're listening to the NBA Draft on ESPN Radio and the ESPN app. G-Shop, J-Will, and Max. You needed to talk about how great L.A. sports are, Key, L.A. No, I didn't have tacos yesterday. But the weather was great. that voice like that? Is that like an L.A. voice pack? Everyone that talks heavy. about when they talk about how great L.A. is. So you never, so you, LA. Jay never saw the video then, obviously. What video? No. There's about a video, LA. there's a video from like a couple years ago on like YouTube or something. They're making fun of how people talk about Los Angeles, so to speak. Tacos. It's like, oh, you haven't had a taco since you had one in L.A. <laughs> but they're, LA. they're mocking, yeah. and they go, well, you haven't run any hills unless you ran Runyon Canyon. You know, it's like Runyon a whole, Canyon. oh, it's a whole thing. <laughs> say. It's, it's pretty it's pretty right on, though. GJ and Max, followed by Greeny, mornings on ESPN Radio and on the ESPN app. The WNBA is off to a record-setting start. I got it in the bank. The bank this season's about super team expectations. It's a really special opportunity. Things like this don't happen often. Leveling up. Don't break her. All she wants to do is show out. And a shiny new rookie class. Boston slips inside, lays it in. 
the WNBA. We're all about Washington at New York, Sunday at 1 p.m. Eastern on ABC. Presented by Google. Well, now, who I got so did you miss Canty and Carlin? Nuno sent me a picture of Jeremy Fowler in the hall at ESPN up in Bristol doing his hit with us. The exact quote was, Fowler doing the hit while walking down the hall. Call him out. I chose not to do that to Jeremy. Nuno sent this picture from behind. Like, that hair from behind, he looks like Elvis. It looks amazing. What is Nuno doing, though? Like, I spy Jeremy Fowler exactly. while he's on the phone with exactly. Canty and Carlin? Canty and Carlin. Weekdays at 3 Eastern on ESPN Radio and on the ESPN app. This is the NBA Draft on ESPN Radio and the ESPN app. Live here at the Barclays Center in Brooklyn, New York. The second round of now the NBA Draft at the pick number 49, the Cleveland Cavaliers on the clock. It's Alan Hahn, P.J. Carlissimo, Seth Greenberg, and Corey Alexander, Amani Bates. Highly touted prospect. He goes from 49 to the Cleveland Cavaliers. At number one in this draft, Victor Wembanyama, a highly anticipated, impactful draft pick that once the lottery happened, one man knew my job is going to get a lot harder. That is, of course, Tom James, the vice president of communications for the Spurs. Been there a long time. And Tom joins us right now. And, and I imagine, I mean, the Spurs have been through this before, obviously. You've had big men come through there, become Hall of Famers and champions. So I'm sure this is just Modus, I mean, this is something that I think you're all used to there in San Antonio. When when the lottery win happens, what is the re is the reaction from you? Is I've done this before, or here we go again? You know, it's it's just magical. It's it's the most amazing gift you can get individually or as a franchise. And and you know, Corey and PJ know the other piece is just San Antonio. Like this means so much. This purse means so much to the city of San Antonio and our region that it's really even hard to explain the impact uh it has on the entire city i can't believe that world traveler is back from europe uh, <laughs> what prompted him what prompted him to come back just the fact that victor was drafted i mean he's he's had david he's had tim i mean this is no big deal to him i'm shocked that tommy would come back uh t how much are you looking forward to it though i mean what what a a change i mean you, you really can't have imagined here we go again with the a number one pick who may be a, a transcendent player. Sure. You know, we got a little dose of reality the last few years, not being a playoff team. And so I think all of us are super appreciative of having this moment. And it is very different. You know, I was there in Charlotte in 97 when we drafted Tim and it was pretty quiet. Um, whereas Victor is truly a, a, a one man hype machine. It, it's crazy. It's wonderful. And, and I mean, thrilled is not a strong enough word. How impressive is he? I mean, I'm blown away by just his presence and his maturity and his thoughtfulness. That's got to be a joy. It is truly amazing. Like, at age 19, in your second language, to do what he does and to do it with the, yeah, the grace and the poise and, and with a smile on his face. I mean, he, he went through a two-hour circuit tonight and he – he smiled all the way through. It just, it's its its remarkable. I don't, I don't know how all of these young men do what they do at 19, 20. It's truly remarkable. Now, TJ, this interview has gone well too long without you mentioning who your favorite draft pick is over the last 30 years. And, again, Victor Wembanyama, great. Tim Duncan, great. You know, but please tell the world who your favorite, of course, draft well, pick is, was. It, it, was, a, it was a big year, and – it, it is hard to describe the impact that you had on the franchise. Thank you, thank you. Uh, thank in you. so many ways. Oh, thank you so very and, much. And, and <laughs> I, I am lobbying to get your jersey retired. We haven't gotten there yet. Yeah, good luck. But, but I, I think, <laughs> good I luck think, with I that think you're the next one, so we're trying hard. <laughs> the next one. <laughs> we're getting to it. For the record, for the record, I wore number one, and I think this guy that just got picked is going to wear number one. I don't think that's going to happen. Wait a second. There is a good chance your jersey is going to be retired. You know what? <laughs> <laughs> it just won't have my name on it. <laughs> hey, it's details. It's details. The time showed the front of the jersey. The Tom, something about the Spurs, obviously, and just the history and the and the lineage again of the of each generation of the champion teams and all. The one thing that you do notice there 
is that the players are still around. Like the, you, you still feel the presence of Tim Duncan, you know, of even though Tony Parker's now in France, but now obviously he had the relationship he's had with Victor. But it's just that connection that is so important, not just – Obviously, Pop, who's been there, this will be, what, 28 seasons now for him as the head right. coach. But when we talk about franchises and standards, right, and, and we always, like Miami, we go heat culture. I mean, that also has to be something in play here with San Antonio and why this is such a, a great fit for Victor. You know, the continuity is amazing, right? So you, you talked about Pop. R.C. Buford, of course, has been there forever, 30-plus years. The Holt family has had amazing leadership on the ownership side. And then it's just amazing. You walk in the gym and – and there's Tim Duncan, you know, running a drill. Or there's Manu talking to a guy in a corner about life. Um, and and it's wonderful. And we've got lots of players. Ice, we've got, you know, Brent Berry, many, many guys that call San Antonio home. And that's a real treat for us. Well, I would listen to Tim talking about virtually anything. I would not listen to Manu, especially, especially about life. But I, I, do, I do want to apologize to Tom because I've been saying for years, Tom only cared about two people in the world, Pop and Tim Duncan, and that's true. He could care about anybody else that's ever been there. Good but decision. He's probably, <laughs> I'm going to say he's going to add a third yeah. going forward now. Victor, uh, Victor's going to slide in Where there. are you Wait, on that list? Yeah, PJ, I, PJ, are you I saying I'm not that third person? No. <laughs> oh, I we thought we were talking about me No, again. we don't exist. We don't exist in Tom's world. Someday, PJ, someday. <laughs> but I, I'm not going to tell. He's still in recovery from hanging out with you. I'm not going to tell them your your nickname. I'm going to let that go. Right, Keep that between you. us. But um, oh, that's a tease. You're, you're in my top hundred, PJ. You know, that's <laughs> top one hundred. He's because he, he hung around with Kerr and Ferry. That was the unholy trio that tormented me for years. Wow. CJ, before we let you go, give us a quick blurb on the new practice facility, the state of the art practice facility that uh, Victor Wimbanyama actually even spoke about. Sure. Talking about the San Antonio Spurs you know, organization. The timing's amazing, right? So we we announced several years ago it's a it's a five hundred million dollar project, uh, forty five acres in the northwest part of town. We have a brand new practice site that's gonna be opening up in uh, in time for training camp and it's it's beautiful. It's a it's a basketball mecca. Uh, but also in that complex, we'll have a dog park for San Antonio. We've got a, a human performance center that will come online. And so it's, it's, a, it's a giant project. It's, it's the biggest thing we've ever done as a franchise. And we're, again, just thrilled by the timing to, to have this thing happening while Victor's coming to San Antonio is, a, again, just a true treat. Is it true that you and Manu are going to be in charge of the dog park? <laughs> Dogs are better than humans. Let's face it. <laughs> Turn down all, all interview requests with the dogs as well. Yes, exactly. But big things happening in San Antonio, and that includes, of course, literally with the number one pick in this draft. Tom, back to work. Here we go. Now, again, you know, all of us, all of us are better at our jobs when Victor walks in the door. The PR person, the marketing person, the ticket sales person. So, we're, again, beyond thrilled. Tom James, again, Vice President of Communications, will be a very busy man like like Mutombo, just blocking all interview requests that are going to be coming <laughs> fast and furious, furious, furious in his rookie season. We are 50 picks through now in the NBA draft in the second round. This has been a busy time. Let's reset a couple of the picks that have gone. It's Keontae Johnson from Kansas State. So good. Just went to Oklahoma City at number 50. Imani Bates, a well-known name if you follow the yeah. high school routes. He went to, at the 49 to the Cavaliers. And at, at 47, the Lakers took Mojave King. And this is a player. Now, This is is this the fourth this player the, from the NBA Academy? Well, he's going to be – he becomes the fifth after uh, Omax. He'll be the fifth one fifth. drafted and the third – from the Global Academy, let me listen to Mark Tatum. The Boston Celtics, the draft rights to Marcus Sasser, the 25th pick. With the 51st pick in the 2023 NBA draft, the Brooklyn Nets select Jalen Wilson from the University of Kansas. Well, Wilson's a pretty good player. Oh, yeah. He's a good player. Uh, they updated a, a, a trade of draft picks from the first round that we had already been talking about. Go ahead, Coach. Going back to Mojave, I'm a fifth academy guy drafted. And, again, he's out of the global uh, academy, which is the one we have in Australia, where he played with both Josh Giddy and Dyson Daniels. But uh, he's also a combine guy because Corey and I have been bragging on the combine guys all night. You're talking a 42-inch vertical, number two, measured right there. And this is the guy who played – in Australia, and you know, and it played in Brisbane and Cairns and Adelaide and 
played in New Zealand. So Mojave King has uh, paid his dues. And, again, uh, you see these different yep. avenues to get to the league. Uh, a big night for the NBA Academy. And a big night for my guy, Keontae Johnson. How about yes. the congratulations to 100%. him? I coached the young man in high school at Oak Hill Academy. He's one of my favorite people that – I've ever had the opportunity to work with. And, of course, the tragedy that he dealt with, the tough circumstances, but making the decision to continue to play basketball and had a great year at Kansas State and now finds himself as a part of the NBA fraternity. Congratulations to Key the Kid, a.k.a. Red, and looking forward to seeing him on That's, the NBA floor. Might be the best story to draft. I'm I with mean, you. from where he was – to where he was this past season to getting a chance to have this experience. Uh, it could be as good a story of resilience and perseverance and uh, just it's a great story. It's a great story for anyone that's going through really, really tough times. I think the other thing is he's here tonight, right? Jalen's here. Jalen's no? here. Yeah, Jalen's yeah. here, yes. He's wearing a kind of a, a takeoff of Grady Dick's. Uh, yeah, he's got some shiny <laughs> suit coming. Yeah, I Some mean, shiny suit on the way. I mean, we got a nice shiny suit. This guy's going to play in the NBA. This guy's going to play in the NBA. Character, work ethic, competitiveness, maturity. He's going to play in the NBA. And he took the OJ Abaji route. He, he put his name in the draft a year ago, got the input, came back, worked on his shot, averaged 20 points a game. That's not something very many guys can say that they've done at Kansas. You average 20 points a game. I want to say the list is – Wayne Simeon, Paul, Paul Pierce. I mean, it, it, maybe it's, Danny, maybe Danny and the Miracles, possibly. Possibly Danny, yeah. but very few guys have been able to do that at Kansas. Frank Mason was the last guy to do it before. Yeah. And so, Virginia guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, Peter <laughs> I Burke, knew you, you were going to roll I, that I, one I, out. I'll, I'll I was waiting there. for you to do that. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, he, he took the Ojai Baji route. He came back to school. He took the, took the, you know, the feedback that he got. From the draft, and then took it back to school and made himself an NBA bullet, NBA player. Oh, date for the Phoenix Suns by way with Georgia. their only pick of the draft, Tumani Kamara from Dayton. He goes to number fifty-two. Let's talk more about the Phoenix Suns and what they will look like next season, and also another big trade that happened or will happen: a three-way deal that changed three franchises. What will Chris Porzingis' impact be in Boston? What will Chris Paul be for the Golden State Warriors? Lots more to get to, and that is all coming up next. Stay with us. This is the NBA Draft on ESPN Radio and the ESPN app. Get in zone, auto zone. Welcome to AutoZone. What are you working on today? I think my battery's dead. With free battery testing and charging, AutoZone is here to help. Get in zone, What if I need a new one? We have the right batteries right here at America's number one battery destination. Get in zone, And what if I don't know how to connect it? No problem. We have a how-to for you at AutoZone.com. Get in zone, AutoZone. Restrictions apply. The Denver Nuggets are NBA champions. Gear up with the official locker room collection. Available now at NBAstore.com. Get your commemorative NBA Finals men's, women's, and kids championship t-shirts and the official hat. The same ones the players wear as they hoist the Larry O'Brien championship trophy. Plus other unique one-of-a-kind designs. Don't miss out. Shop now. NBAstore.com. A fanatics experience. With summer in full swing, now's the perfect time to head to the ballpark. Score great deals on great seats from our friends at Vivid Seats, the official ticketing partner of ESPN. Every crack of the bat, every diving catch, every heart-pounding play. Experience it live, in person, from the first pitch to the final inning. Vivid Seats has a huge selection of MLB tickets, and they're the only ticket company that rewards your purchases. For the best selection of 2023, shop now. Just visit VividSeats.com or download the app today. Vivid Seats. Experience it live. Progressive covers pets in our auto policy at no extra charge. Now, let's see what your dog has to say. As a dog, I think Progressive's auto pet policy is... Oh, what is that? That's just my tail. <laughs> Weird. Anyway, Progressive protects... There it is again. See? 
This is why I need protection. I'm so distracted. <laughs> nope, that is still my tail. Progressive Auto Insurance covers pets for up to $1,000 in a car accident at no extra charge. And we think your dog would say that's great, too. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Coverage for cats and dogs included with the purchase of collision coverage and subject to policy terms. You're listening to the NBA Draft on ESPN Radio and on the ESPN app. Back at the Barclays Center in Brooklyn, New York, Alan Hahn, P.J. Colissimo, Seth Greenberg, Corey Alexander. We are through 53 picks in the NBA Draft, well into the second round. Five picks to go. Remember, we stop at 58. There is no – we're missing two picks here uh, as – this was, again, this was the two picks that were taken away with the Bulls and the Sixers who forfeited second round picks as a result of tampering and free agency. That's the slap on the wrist you get. So we'll be done at 58 when we continue here at the Barclays Center. And guys, the trades that are made tonight, a lot of them aren't official and picks that are made. Guys are wearing hats for different teams. And there's other player movement that are happening now through reports. And one that really caught everybody's attention is a three team trade. That the Boston Celtics send Marcus Smart to the Memphis Grizzlies. The Grizzlies send Tyus Jones to the Wizards. And the Wizards send Chris Asporzingis to the Celtics. What yeah, kind a, of impact does Porzingis have on Boston, which was an underachieving team last year in the postseason, did not advance, which we thought they should get to the finals. They didn't. And they add Porzingis. Are they better with him and not with Marcus Smart? Uh, he's got some stepping up to do. The number one thing he's got to do is become healthy. Uh, he's just missed so many games throughout his career. So uh, can he play a representative number of games? Uh, can he match the numbers he's put up? I'll be quiet here for a second. When 2023 NBA draft. The Sacramento Kings select Jalen Slauson from Furman University. Um, finishing the thought, yep. I, I mean, he's stuffed the stat sheet throughout his career. I mean, he scores almost 20 points a game, eight boards a game. He blocks shots to a game. He makes 80% of his free throws, but he's been hurt an awful lot. Uh, if he goes into Boston and he gives them rim protection and knock down shooting from three, and he's certainly not going to be the focus of the other team's defense because of the two wings they yep. got out there capable of, of putting 60 points up any night uh, that, that they choose to do so. Uh, yeah, he could he could help them. But to me, he's got to show that he's able to be healthy, productive, and play on a winning team and perform in the playoffs. That, and I'm not saying that's over his head. He's capable of doing sure. it. But he, he's got to prove he can do it. His best ability for the Celtics will be availability. But how much what? do they lose with moving on from Marcus Smart? Oh, oh, can't overstate that. Go ahead, sir. No, no. I mean, yeah, go ahead. No, you. you look, well, my thing about because every lead, every team has a leading scorer and a leading rebounder. Now, can he look, put those numbers up on a winning team that's competing for a national championship, an NBA championship? Now, that, that's the big question. Is it going to make the game easier for Brown and Tatum? Probably. Is it, is the game going to be easier for him playing with Brown and Tatum? No doubt about it. So, I mean, yeah, it could be a good piece. The bigger spaces. Let me ask you, Corey. Here's a guy that's the focal point of your locker room. You know, Marcus Smart. He's a Celtic. You know, this this is what the Celtics are all about. He's got green hair. Yeah. All right, he's got green hair. And then, and then, and then, after all that, the rest of the team sees. Oh, by the way, you're out. And only you're out because the Malcolm Brogdon trade didn't, didn't go, go through. through. So not only do you do this, you do it on such short notice because you're up against the gun with poor Zingas with the midnight deadline that you do this most likely without having a conversation with Jason Tatum, without having a conversation with Jalen Brown. And now those guys find out that Smart just got traded with everyone else. That causes a problem in your locker room. But, Alan, to go back to your question, I'm normally long-winded with my answers, but I can simply say no. They are not better with Porzingis than they are with Marcus Smart. They're worse. And if they don't make a move in the backcourt to get someone similar to Marcus Smart, they're going to stop their streak of getting to the Eastern Conference Finals this year. They will be out much earlier in the playoffs. Wow, yeah. Ooh, that's, that's, that's a bold, that's yeah, a bold that's a statement. Take. I, 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 Strong take. Okay. Well, only time will tell, but I'll tell you this right now. 
They have been successful. They've had success. They have success with their defense. And Marcus Smart is the leader of their defense. Definitely a leader on that team, and he is not there anymore. Speaking of leaders, Chris Paul has been a leader throughout his entire career. He is now starting to bounce around from team to team. He ends up, when all the music stops, in Golden State. Does he have a chance to finally win a championship? We'll discuss that and get the final picks of the NBA draft all coming up next. You're listening to the NBA draft on ESPN Radio and the ESPN app. Coming up Friday, we'll recap the NBA draft, and I'll tell you who won and who left us scratching our heads. Keyshawn, J. Willemax, 6 a.m. Eastern, right here on ESPN Radio, ESPN2, and ESPNU. The WNBA is off to a record-setting start. I got it in the bag, the bag is back. This season's about super team expectations. It's a really special opportunity. Things like this don't happen often. Leveling up. Don't oh, bring her. All she wants to do is show out. And a shiny new rookie class. Austin slips inside, lays it in. The WNBA. We're all about Washington at New York. Sunday at 1 p.m. Eastern on ABC. Presented by Google. Now, I got the Baseball Tonight Podcast. But I also see, like, off in the distance on the horizon, this monumental battle for American League MVP. The Baseball Tonight Podcast is on the ESPN app or wherever you listen to podcasts. If I was the Alabama fan, which, thanks by the grace of God, I'm not, that would embarrass me. I mean, what's, what's, what's going on with saving Paul? Paul Feinbaum. Weekdays at 3 Eastern on the ESPN app and the SEC Network. Do you ever wish that you could get closer to the world of sports? Well, with the ESPN app, you're one app and one tap away from the action. You can get live scores and stats for your NBA team. Or follow your favorite golfer as she launches off the tee. You even get 24-7 coverage of the biggest NFL plays. So what are you waiting for? Oh, sorry, I carried away. So what are you waiting for? Download the ESPN app and get closer than ever. Friday, I'm Fitz and Harry. Chris Paul's headed to Golden State, and he told us what matters most to him, winning a championship. So we're going to tell you if he can get it done. Fitz and Harry, Friday, noon Eastern on ESPN Radio, and watch on the ESPN app. This is the NBA Draft on ESPN Radio and the ESPN app. At the Barclays Center, the closing picks of the 2023 NBA Draft. Two picks left to go on the night. Alan Hahn, P.J. Carlissimo, Seth Curry. <laughs> I almost said Seth Curry because I know where we're going next. <laughs> Seth, Seth Curry would have worked. <laughs> Corey, Alex, yeah, that's probably what was happening here. But in my head, I've got the Curry family because we were talking about the Golden State Warriors and an interesting trade that they are part of in sending Jordan Poole which we can understand why you're moving Jordan Poole as he goes to the Washington Wizards, but they bring back Chris Paul, and Chris Paul heading to the Wizards in the Bradley Beal trade. And we were wondering where he would end up. We thought it'd be L.A. It's California, but it's San Francisco. He's got one year left on his deal, still chasing a ring. The Warriors are still championship DNA. How is this fit look to you guys? It could be a fit. If Chris Paul says, I'm a guy at this point at 38 years old who will be complacent with coming off the bench, playing 18 to 20 minutes a game, and conserving my body until playoff time. But it also could be a buyout market. It could be a wave to allow Chris Paul to get his $30 million. Because you remember early, the Phoenix Suns said that they were going to waive Chris Paul. They were not going to right. take that team option and pay him the $30 million. Well, they used that picking up that team option to be able to trade him to Washington. Washington now trades him to Golden State so that Golden State can get off of the four years, $140 million that they owe Jordan Poole. And so it was a financial decision. The Chris Paul move has been a financial decision for all parties involved. But does Golden State say we're going to keep him as a part of what we're building for in the future? Or do they say, hey, Chris, thank you for allowing us to move Jordan Poole. We're going to let you go pay you your $30 million, and you choose where you want to go. Mm. And that would end up 
with the Los Angeles Lakers, where he still lives. Even when he was in Phoenix, he lived in Los Angeles. His kids went to school there. Would you do that if you were Golden State, in a, a team in your division, um, and hand him off? The, uh, the, the big thing is enable him to, to sign probably Draymond Green. Well, taking on – Taking regardless, that contract, right? regardless, there's still 30 million on the cap for right. this year. And so even if you waive him, you're still going to have to pay. You amnesty him. You're still going to have to pay some of that and it will right. still hit your cap. So would they do that and allow the Lakers to get better? Because I believe that the Lakers would be better with CP. I'm not sure if Mike Dunleavy Jr. would do that in his first <laughs> yeah, round, you know, but the one thing you don't want is a disgruntled Chris Paul on your roster and in your locker room as a leader and in, in being to that point. The money part of it makes is what, when you explain it, it makes sense because it's not just about this year to buy them out. It's about future. As we know, the new CBA is going to make life very difficult for teams that have spent a lot, repeater tax, and we know that Golden State has been one of those. I mean, the bill is due now on a dynasty of four championships, and they've got to pay it. And this could be a way to at least as they move on from the pool contract that maybe not next year, but when this stuff all does kick in two years from now and beyond, they're a little bit less in the penalty than they were with Jordan Poole. And now we've also got to mention Draymond Green opted out of the last year of his contract. Yes. Draymond Green, represented by my guy, of course, who met us as soon as we got out the, out the car coming in, was Rich Paul. Yes. And so Rich Paul who is still in the building and making phone calls to teams, please asking them not to draft Chris Livingston <laughs> so that he can be a free agent, an undrafted free agent, and pick his spots. And that's one of the things that so many different guys at this point, they don't want to be drafted in the late 50s, really in the 50s, because there's not much chance of them making a roster. So give them the freedom to be able to go and find their own spot, similar to what will be the case for Draymond Green, except for the want for him is going to be a little more significant moving forward. That, that is interesting perspective. Trey yeah. Jackson uh, Davis was That's taken cool. here at 57 uh, by the Washington Wizards. So uh, another one of Mike Woodson's players uh, from Indiana. But it's made you would think like, you want to be drafted. But the logic here is this late in the draft, don't want to be drafted so I could choose – where I, where I can go. Uh, right. Chris Livingston, if he came back to Kentucky, he would have gone with next year's draft. He probably would have gone in the first round. I agree wholeheartedly. Yeah. I mean, you talk about a bad decision.
you were going. But do you just feel a relief that this process, this part of this whole thing is now over with and you can just go forward now as a Spur officially and focus on your NBA career? Yeah. You know, uh, it wasn't much of suspense, but <laughs> still, the emotion is there, you know. After <laughs> I was called in front of everyone, you know, that music before he, he says my name and stuff, that was so, so special. That's I'm fair. loving the moment. You should love the moment. You got somebody who played in San Antonio for a number of years, and I was lucky enough to coach there for five years when uh, TP first got started. Go back a month ago when it was announced, and, you know, you found out that night. You're very, your parents have done a great job raising you, and you've done an unbelievable job. You always say the right thing. But really, that were, was San Antonio the one oh, you were hoping for all absolutely. along? Absolutely, yeah. Without a doubt, yeah. You watch? Did you watch t uh, Tony growing up, or how far back oh, do you yeah. go watching Gr the Spurs? Up, yeah, growing up, of course I watched Tony. Yeah, it, with the Spurs and with the national team too. Yeah, I mean everyone, every French basketball player around my age, he's, he's watched Tony growing up. Well, Victor, as as Greg Popovich's first ever draft pick, <laughs> I want to, I want to welcome you to the San Antonio Spurs family first and foremost. Thanks, man. But I had an opportunity to call your game October the fourth when you. It's your first game really? on U.S. mainland, okay. and you played great in that game. But you were more satisfied with your second game where you won. You made it very clear you're all about winning. How soon can you win in San Antonio? Uh, you know, unfortunately, I think I'm, I'm not experienced enough to be able to answer this question, but this is going to be my goal in the first year, learn as much as possible because the chip, the, the, the ring, it's always what I'm going to be winning. So, as soon as possible. And they won a few in San Antonio. He's 7'4", 8-foot wingspan, considered by many the next generational talent, a player who can defend, play above the win, or rim, I should say, fluid, step-back threes. The guy that's 7'4", can do it off one leg during the French A-League regular season, average over 20 points and 10 boards a game with three blocks, leading the league in all three categories. P.J. Carlissimo, Andrea Carter on what? The Spurs are getting. He's going to be one of the best shot blockers in the league. And it's not just because he's so tall and so athletic. He has a knack for it. I, I, like to me, you've never been able, you can work with guys a little bit, but you can't teach shot blocking. There's guys that are just, that are very good at that. They, they anticipate, they see it, not just their own guy, more so off the ball. He's incredible. You watch him block shots. I mean, he could block three shots or more a game. That alone makes him a, a really, really a uh, major contributor. You know, everybody always says you got to have one NBA skill. This kid's got like four or five, but the two they keep talking about all the time, the shot blocking and the stroke. So that's, I mean, he's going to be unbelievable. With his skill set, he could be better than Jokic, in my opinion. The things that we're seeing from Jokic in terms of facilitating and passing and, and distributing the basketball and scoring the basketball and rebounding the basketball, there is all of that, plus the moves that Victor Wimbanyama can make like a true guard. Pull-up jump shots off the dribble, the pitch and catch and transition into a one-dribble pull-up. Those type of things and the fluidity that Victor Wimbanyama can move with, I think we'll see overall dominance from him, similar to Jokic. We'll see that same thing, but it'll look unlike anything that we've seen before because of Victor's fluidity, because of his athleticism, and because of his size. Man, consider he goes to a Spurs team that's gone 32-39, and 33-39, and 34-48, and 48, and then last season 22-60. and 60. They could use his help. Next up, the Hornets at two. Is it Scoot or Miller time? With the second pick in the 2023 NBA draft, the Charlotte Hornets select Brandon Miller. From the University of Alabama. Uh, there you have it, all smoke and mirrors with the rumors on the draft day. Miller, the Hornets pick, 6'9 playmaker, SEC freshman of the year at Alabama, averaged just under 19 points, better than eight rebounds and two gives a game. 38% from beyond the arc, won the SEC tournament. MVP was named second team All American. Corey Alexander on this choice. You can play Brandon Miller in a number of spots. Remember, you could possibly have Miles Bridges back into your roster this season. So now you're thinking about LaMelo Ball at the point. You can play Brandon Miller as your shooting guard, Miles Bridges and P.J. Washington. That four across the board, you've got long talent 
that can switch defensively, and that's a very good offensive unit. Who, considering who you throw in there at the center position, can they defend the rim? Brandon Miller's that good to where he can be your secondary playmaker alongside the mellow ball, but also he could end up being their leading scorer early in his career. With the third pick in the 2023 NBA Draft, the Portland Trailblazers select Scoot Henderson from Marietta, Georgia, and the NBA G League's Team Ignite. Yes, yeah, Scoot Henderson, he's the third overall pick. He is a point guard, a team that's been led by Dame over the years. Does Lillard stay with the Blazers, or might he be dealt? Scoot on going to Portland. He's got his headset is on. Okay, Scoot Henderson joins us right now, the number three pick in the draft, Portland Trailblazers. You look pretty happy about this. You happy about the destination or just happy that I'm I'm in? It's done. No, I'm, I'm happy about both, man. I'm happy to be here. You know, I'm blessed to go go that high. And, uh, I've already been to Portland, and I know the city right now, so uh, I'm just blessed to get back to the fans. Scoot, first and foremost, congratulations. We spent a lot of time together yes, this year, yes, my sir. guy. I'm happy for you. And I know that Portland is happy to have you in the fold. Now, one of the things you've heard all about the trade rumors, you've heard about everything going on, and there's a lot of interest in you and the other 29 teams. How do you prepare yourself for that, knowing that, of course, right now you're a Portland Trailblazer, but in this business of the NBA, you could find yourself somewhere else very soon? Um, honestly, I just, I just continue to work. I just put my head down to work and control what I can. And, that, and that's how hard I work, and that's me every day getting better in my body and my mind. So. That's how I'm going about it. That's a good way to look at it right there. Up next, the Thompson Twins with the next two picks. With the fourth pick in the 2023 NBA Draft, the Houston Rockets select Amen Thompson from Oakland, California, an overtime elite. With the fifth pick in the 2023 NBA Draft, Pistons select Asar Thompson from Oakland, California, an overtime elite. Uh, it is one of those moments where you could see it and be it, but when you have a vision board as nine-year-olds to play in the NBA and then to realize that 10 years later, what's your reaction? And by the way, we got to... The only way we're going to separate things, a man is wearing the Rockets hat, right? Asar is wearing the Pistons hat. So we'll start here with Asar. What was it like to see your brother drafted and then you follow up fifth overall? It was crazy to see him drafted. When, I, when the team called him, I was like, I seen him smiling. I was like, oh, this is real. My heart was beating more for him. When it, when it was my turn, I didn't know where I was going to go, like until Adam Silver said it, until I saw the cameras come to the table. But it was more exciting for him just because I had never seen it before. When it came to me, I was like, I've done this before. I know it's going to happen now. How did you feel about seeing your brother drafted fifth overall? It was cool. I, like he said, I was more excited for him than I was myself. But I was going, I was going crazy. I'm not going to lie. I was <laughs> I was down um, at the interview station. They, it's like they knew. They were, like, waiting on him. Right. So, yeah. How cool is that? Two brothers go back-to-back. -to -back. Top five picks in the draft. Those parents have to be awfully proud. I'm in going to the Rockets. Asar to the Pistons. Much more on the NBA draft later in the show as we explore surprises in the first round. And keep up with all the picks. I'll remind you, rounds one and two on ESPN.com. You're listening to Sports Center All Night on ESPN Radio and the ESPN app. Also from the association, Chris Paul's pursuit of a championship will take him to the Bay and the Golden State Warriors. They've agreed to a trade that will send Jordan Poole to the Wizards. Several picks, a one and a two will go to D.C. in this deal. Bobby Marks on how CP3 fits in Golden State. I thought he played extremely well in the Clippers series. It's going to be interesting what they roll out there. You know, certainly Chris, Steph, um, Clay, Wiggins, and then Draymond at the five. I think it gives Steve Kerr a lot of different functionality as far as different lineups that he can roll out. I think he'll fit. You can certainly put him at the point and, you know, have Curry play off the ball. As you guys know, it's just a matter of just making it till mid-April in, in, in one piece. Yeah, he was on Kenny and Carl, and as was Mark J. Spears on motivations for Paul now in a role with the Warriors. Chris wants a ring, man. And he wants to put himself in the best position to win. And then if you think of it from a minute standpoint, he doesn't have to play 40 minutes, 35 minutes, even 30 minutes there. He could be, I think, his sweet spot's probably like 25 to 30. 
even as a small lineup, that's a powerful lineup, a scary lineup. And, yeah, I, I don't expect Chris Paul to come off the bench. Yeah, and the other way, it's Poole going to the Wiz. Though with Draymond Green on that team, Kendrick Perkins says that had to happen. We saw the writing on the wall. We saw at times when Steph Curry was frustrated with him when he was taking shots that the Golden State Warriors felt like should have been in Steph's hands. We seen and we heard Draymond Green talk about how that incident basically broke up their locker room and they weren't going to win the championship. We saw the drop-off. And the great Kevin Garnett used to always say, watch the young players after they get their money, and that's how you can see the real them. Since Jordan Poole got the bag, he's been a completely different player. I think this is a right move for the Warriors, and I would love to see Chris Paul alongside Steph Curry. Yeah, it was just one season, though, by the way, just one season. <laughs> and he did get knocked out in the preseason <laughs> by Draymond. Maybe a new team and a new site is good for him. Much more NBA coverage on Keyshawn, J. Will, and Max this morning. ESPN Radio, ESPN2, ESPN U, J. Williams, Max Kellerman, joined by Bobby Marks at 715 Eastern. Seth Greenberg, ESPN basketball analyst at 9 Eastern. And Sean Elliott, former NBA champion and Spurs great. He's a San Antonio Spurs TV analyst. He'll talk about Wemby in San Antonio at 930 Eastern. Coming up, the finals for the College World Series is set as Wake and LSU ends in a walk-off, and we'll keep it on the diamond with San Fran's 10-game winning streak halted in a 